Hello everyone, welcome to Joshua's Generation. If you are watching this video, Kai, just know that God led you here. I encourage you because the kind of things I want to share in this video, oh my God, they are mind-blowing. You are not just going to make progress, but you are going to make what I call tremendous progress. So I encourage you, watch this video till the end because I want to pour out what the Spirit of the Lord laid in my heart to share. All right, this is a continuation of our series Invisible Realm. All right, and today I want to talk about the realm of the subconscious. Listen, I want to tell you something. Every human being on earth acts more from their subconscious state than their conscious state. So it means that most of the things you do, you do them unconsciously. Most of the things that happens to you, most of the, the way you act, you act from your subconscious than your conscious. You know, I've actually taught us severally that the physical realm is a report card of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. So if you see a physical manifestation, it means that that physical manifestation was first formed in the spirit before it could manifest in the physical. But I also want to let you know that we humans, we act from four realms. We, act from, we, we have the realm of the, the emotional realm, the spiritual realm, the mental realm, and the physical realm. Now you need to understand that the physical realm is a manifestation of these three realms. So it means that any manifestation you see physically, the foundation of that physical realm has to do with the emotional, the spiritual, and the mental realm. So you see that you cannot control your physical until you first control it from the spiritual realm. Now before I continue, I would like you to like this video, please subscribe, comment, alright? So this video is going to spread to many people on, on this platform. So when I'm talking about the subconscious, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the realm of your programming. So growing up, the things you saw, all right, the, the, the things you were told, the things you believed while growing up, it, it, these things became a programming that, 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 that it programmed how you respond to issues, how you were built. So if you have wrong, the wrong programming in certain areas of your life, you will notice that there will be a wrong manifestation. For example, a carpenter has a tool. No matter how good those tools are, if the tools are not in the hands of a good carpenter, the tools will look so bad. So many of us, we have bright destinies, bright future, but our build-up was not the best. I was reading online how Donald Trump lost $1.17 billion. And I was like, Donald Trump now does not look like we lost that kind of money. As I'm talking to you, he made double in the coming years. Do you know why? Because Donald Trump is not poor. Now, poverty is not lack of money. Poverty is first internal than, first than external. For example, somebody is playing Ponzi scheme and the person wins $1 billion. Have you seen people that had a lot of money enter into their hands and all of a sudden they are back to square one? The reason why it is like that is because internally they have not yet been built for that kind of wealth. So somebody wins $1 million through Ponzi scheme and all of a sudden you see that person is back Okay, let me use Naira because we're in Nigeria. That person is back to 5,000 Naira. That is possible because that person's original state, his spiritual state, his invisible state was not prepared for 1 million. So that person went back to square one. That's why you see that somebody that loses a lot. Okay, let's say Dangote. If Dangote loses all he has, give him time. He's going to bounce back because Dangote is not a poor man. He's a rich man. Not by the wealth, not by the assets, but what makes a man wealthy has entered into him. So I'm just trying to tell you, we act more subconsciously than consciously. And our subconscious controls what is around us. Okay, let's say for example, you wore a white cloth for let's say three years, and this cloth still white, still looking new. And people are asking you, oh, did you just buy this cloth? And you give somebody this cloth. Okay, I, I, I give you as a gift. And you are seeing this cloth in two weeks time, and you cannot differentiate whether this cloth is still white or brown. What just happened is that this person's mindset took over the clothes. This person's subconscious took over the clothes. You have been using the phone for five years, still very good, and you gave somebody in less than three days, the screen is broken. What you just saw was a, was a printout of who that person really is. This was what God was pointing out in the life of the children of Israel. God was pointing this out because the children of Israel were used to defeat by the Egyptians. They were used so much defeat by the Egyptians. And God wanted to re-engineer their mindset. When God took them to the wilderness, the Bible says in Numbers 13, 30 down. If you read it, the Bible was speaking. Joshua and Caleb, they went to a land. And when they came back to give Moses the report, other people were saying, they are giants in this land. We are finished. We are finished. 
They, they were so used to defeat that they never saw that they could ever in their life become something. But Joshua and Caleb said, we saw the giant body and grasshoppers. You, you will always hear God say, tell the children of Israel, tell to your children how I saved. What God was trying to do was that God was trying to re-engineer their consciousness so that they will begin to see themselves great. When a man sees himself small, so, I mean so small, listen, even the things he can defeat will defeat him. Have you seen the Deuteronomy chapter 6? God said, God, God said, write it, paste it on your door, tie it to your hands. Keep seeing it. The more you see it, what God was trying to do, God was trying to re-engineer that their subconsciousness to now believe that they have a God in Israel. Do you know that Israel today now is one of the unbeatable nations? That was what God achieved. God was trying to remove Egypt from them. Remove Egypt from them. There are many things inside of us that needs to be removed. As a point, nature said, he, he, he pasted the, the, the number of people he wants in his congregation. He pasted it on his roof, pasted it on his wall, pasted it on his door. When he wakes up, that's the first thing he sees. When he looks at the world, that's the first thing he sees. When he goes out, that, that's the next thing he sees. 10,000, 10,000 members. He said, the, he, I don't know, maybe he grew from a small kind of church setting. Now, no church is small, but you understand the context I'm, I'm speaking from. Maybe, maybe not too many numbers, but he had to re-engineer his consciousness. Until, until you, you say it and your heart accepts it, you know, Kai, you just entered into it. So in Joshua chapter 4, from verse 6 to 8, you always hear God saying, tell this to your children. What God was trying to do was that God was trying to re-engineer their subconscious so that their conscious environment can now be reprogrammed. How then do you re-engineer your subconsciousness? You re-engineer your subconsciousness by becoming conscious of what is right. You will hear great men say they grew up seeing poverty, seeing poverty so much and it's as if nothing is working for them also. And you will hear them they broke into light and they will always wake up every day look, looking at them, themselves in the mirror and telling themselves, I can never be poor. What are they doing? They are saying it consciously until it enters into their subconscious and their subconscious accepts it that they can never be poor. And all of a sudden, the breakthrough opens. It's called the realm of the subconscious. Till your subconscious accepts it. Proof that you have not, it has not entered into your subconscious. This is the proof. Now, the proof is that if you say it with your mouth, and your heart is not accepting it. Know that there's still there's still work to do. For example, you you, you tell yourself, "So I can have ten billion dollars. I can have ten billion dollars." And you keep confessing it. If there's still a part in your heart telling you, "Are you sure? You cannot." Have you? Do you know what ten billion dollars looks like? It means you are not. It has not yet entered. It has not yet sat on, on in, in your subconscious. So you keep confessing it. You keep confessing it. You keep saying it until the day you say it. And your heart, it enters and you, your heart accepts it. Yes, you can have it. Listen, that is the day you broke through. So you need to learn how to recondition. Many people have heard so much that money is the root of all evil. No, the Bible did not say money is the root of all evil. The Bible said they love for money. So they say money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. Money, now anytime money wants to come to them, some, it's like a spirit appears in front of them to block the money from coming. Do you know why it happens? It is not really a spirit, it's just that your subconscious, ay, this, thing is, this thing is deep. Your subconscious controls your environment. That is how God created it. No, we're teaching on the invisible realm. I'm not sure we can finish this today because it's, it's so deep. I'm going to continue from here in our next video. So please, like this video. If, if you want to hear more about this, okay? If you want to hear more about this, like this video, subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. God bless you.